Yeah, welcome back. This is News File, your most authoritative news analysis show brought to you by Bank of Africa, Strong as a group and close as a partner, MTN. Welcome to the new world, Sasso Spray, fresh and powerful star assurance, creating smiles since 1985 and celebrating 30 years of solid partnership. And also Lipton Tea, that's the number one tea brand, and Cowbell Coffee, smile and have a sunshine day. And I say that with a smile because um, I just had a sip and it's uh, nice. Now, uh, take control of your MTN SIM account today with MTN Self Service. Call 1333-1333 now and register for free. Welcome to the new world. MTN, everywhere you go. Every day we make countless decisions, but what's your major concern today? Is it to send and receive money uh, safely or to enjoy convenient banking? Well, you can have a heave a sigh of relief now because at Bank of Africa Ghana, you can access swift money transfers via Western uh, Union money transfer or uh, MoneyGram and worry bank on the go with their electronic banking products be web and be mobile and also pay your fees and utility bills now that's value for you and your time visit any of bank of africa's branches nationwide for more information bank of africa close us uh strong as a group and close as a partner uh, thank you very much now let me share with you some of the messages that you have brought in. Spike in Ohio, USA uh, says that I perfectly agree with Linda Quaffo on, what's, um, okay, on what, va what value will asset declaration be if it is not verified and publicized. Ghanaian public officers are scared to have their assets known because the public office... Uh, but the public office is the Akoko farm <laughs> where they amass wealth. This is just what uh, uh, Mr. Tony Forcing was complaining about and saying that the declaration is in the interest of the public office holder, really. Kwame Poku Edujemfi says, I cannot get the drift of the assets declaration. Will a young police constable also declare his or her assets? Hmm. If yes, then what would people say after he or she uh, rises to become an officer where definitely he might have acquired enough assets then uh, won't people say he made these assets as a result of uh, the one CD that he took on the highway let us look into the aspect that aspect too but this is very simple isn't it if you have acquired extra asset you simply justify how you acquired it there's no problem with that Simon in Wale Wale says, the legitimate concerns raised by the NPP uh, regarding the talency by election must not be swept under the carpet. The alleged illegal commissions and uh, commissions of the electoral commissions and omissions of the electoral commission and the alleged bias of the Upper East Police Command must be looked into uh, in ensuring a free, fair, and transparent election. Thank you for your messages. Now, let's look at the GBA's uh, rates that it has filed at the Supreme Court. And it's filed by the GBA itself, its president, Nene Amegache, its former president, uh, Beecham, Frank Beecham, and also its uh, secretary, that is uh, Amenuvo. So, what are they asking for? And I'd just like to read just two of the declarations they are seeking. Number one, these are the reliefs they are seeking at the Supreme Court. They say, a declaration that upon a true and proper construction of Article 144, clauses 2 and 3 of the Constitution 1992, all appointments made by the President of the Republic of Ghana to the Superior Court are valid only to the extent that such appointments are made in strict accordance with the advice of the second defendant herein, and that is the Judicial Council. They have sued two entities, the Attorney General and the Judicial Council. And then uh, the very final of the Declaration 4, Relief 4, is that a declaration that an appointment or non-appointment by the President of the Republic of Ghana of a Justice of the Superior Court 
in a manner out of accord with the advice of the Judicial Council is unconstitutional, null, void, and of no effect. In the writ or in their statement, they speak to certain facts that even in the current appointment, the Judicial Council advised on three persons. Only two were put forward by the President, vetted by Parliament, and subsequently, you know, uh, sworn in. In regard to the Court of Appeal, seven names were put out. Only five were dealt with. And that appears to be the gravamen of the complaint, that the President has no right to vary or reject the names put, vetted first by the Judicial Council and put before the President for the process to kick start. They say this procedure has been breached since the 1992 Constitution came into effect. Presidents have violated it and they want to stop it now. Mr. Forsen. Yes, I'm sorry. This, this is a tall order, isn't it? It is not. Okay, explain to us. It is not. Unfortunately, what has happened, as uh, over the years, Kweku has been saying, that when certain untruths are peddled continuously, they seem to be accepted as a truth. Indeed, when this writ was filed, even though I knew exactly what we were asking for, Certain statements were made on the radio to the extent that I had to call the president and ask that are these the reliefs that we are seeking from the Supreme Court? You mean the president of the bar? Of the bar. Okay. To ask that are these the reliefs? Because I began getting confused that a writ which we had carefully considered and carefully timed had been, to, once again to borrow quick word, bastardized. <laughs> to seem as if we were challenging the president's appointment of these two specific individuals. First of all... Well, you don't think the timing gives cost? I'll address that? all those issues. Mm. First of all, the mandate to go to court. Some, I heard some people or in authority say that they had spoken to some lawyers and the lawyers were saying that uh, they were unaware of the writ, etc. I mean, that is crass ignorance. <laughs> First of all, the constitution of the Ghana Bar Association mandates the general counsel in between conferences, that is the constitution, to steer the affairs of the association. So to, the decision to go to court doesn't have to go to conference. So first of all, we are within our rights under the constitution. It's not the first time the GBA has gone to court. No. On behalf so of it is, it is mm. a, a ignorance of the highest order. Two, the, the authority, um, the reliefs that we are seeking, as you read, are clear. We have not asked the Supreme Court to declare null and void these appointments. This writ is a prospective writ. And as Honorable said, we should build the institutions of state to become stronger. Mm. What we are seeking to do is that ever since the 1992 constitution came into effect, we've seen, and the reason why to answer uh, uh, Kweku's question on another platform that he raised was that, that we should have uh, given uh, further and better, better particulars. Mm. We decided not to do so, so that it doesn't look personal. To come to your question as to the timing, some people have said that we are stopped because we sat down for the nomination, the vetting, and the swearing in to go on. Especially because the GBA has representation that at the Judicial so. Council. Indeed. The General Council is made up of 20 presidents and secretaries from all the regions past presidents and the national uh, executive general council of the bar of the bar okay are you saying samson that assuming we are all of average intelligence and i believe we are not we do not know the utility of an injunction if we were minded to stop it if we were minded to fight we could have easily gone to court for an injunction but we said no let this go but going forward this is what we've realized and let us ask the Supreme Court to make clear declarations. Unfortunately, I do concede yeah. that maybe the timing looks as if the fight was for a declaration. Be, 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 before you speak to the timing, yes, you know, in detail, you say you, you could have sought an injunction. Yes, we could. But you know that by practice at the Supreme Court, yes. as soon as a, a rate is filed there, it's 
you know, by practice operates as an injunction, so to speak, particularly on a matter that is live. Yes. You see, the, the issues about, some people have even said that we want to embarrass the president. Why would we do that? Why would we do that? We seek just to strengthen the institution of the Judicial uh, Council. And if you go through the writ, some people said, have said all kinds of derogatory things, which I will not repeat. But this, if you have read it, and I believe you have, mm. a 59-page document, which is well thought out. The entire which, process is 66. Yes. Mm. The, uh, that includes the yeah. affidavits. Exactly. It's well thought out. It has looked at legislative history of Ghana, Malawi, Zimbabwe, gone to India. Give us some credit. Mm. Unfortunately, I, that is why I don't want to personalize it because unfortunately those people who made those effusions made it out of crass ignorance. And I will forgive them. But as Atimidoro said in Julius Caesar, I will say to the president who I met only once when he met the bar last year, July. Fantastic gentleman. I have nothing against him. I don't know him. Rather, his brother is my friend. But the point is that those around the president seem to be looking for some turf to show that they are, they, they are solid or whatever. This is a matter before the Supreme Court. Let the Supreme Court decide. All this shadow boxing will not help anybody. The matter is before the Supreme Court. And I believe that, you see, we shouldn't take an adversary uh, position that once this matter has been filed, it has to be defended. We seek to develop the law. So if I were Attorney General, then I'm not. It, it is not necessary that the Attorney General ought to react. We all have to promote the building of strong institutions. If you look somewhere in um, um, the submissions, we quoted Dr. T. Alex Maigasa from uh, Zimbabwe. And you see that what he said is so crucial for even the people on the bench that meritocracy has to be promoted. It shouldn't be the case where when someone is on the bench, he feels that if he doesn't partner to authority, he will not be promoted. It shouldn't be so. It kills initiative on the bench. When um, government is interested in the matter, people are scared. But these are the things that we seek to avoid when we are developing a democracy. In fact, we quoted a case of uh, uh, Ablakwa and uh, Omani Bwama, uh, versus the Attorney General, where Atuguba said that because of the truncation of the 69 and 79 constitutions, our constitutional development has been very um, um, limited with regard to such pronouncements by the Supreme Court. These are the things that we seek to promote. Every day I read this writ, I see that we have a long way to go. And the Bar Association will not shirk its responsibility. Contrary to what some people try to uh, do by saying that the Bar Association sometimes said, and that is in reference to my former boss, Mr. Kwame Tete, that the Bar Association will not concern itself with public affairs. I brought that document here. I'll sh show it to you. In 19, uh, 2006, on 19th October, our statement to the press, the Bar said that the, uh, the political terrain has changed. There is a democracy in place. The Bar will continue its um, objects under its constitution to fight for human rights, etc., to comment on public affairs. It is here. However, it will turn onto itself and concentrate on how to act professionally, how to represent people to the best of their abilities. So nowhere has the bar ever said that it was going to run away from politics. So this but propaganda that has I been what ele elevated to truth, which is now being quoted that is why by I everybody, say, that I'm the bar said they will not be dealing in any The statement is here, 19th October 2006. But you have been quiet all this while about this. I have the opportunity today, so I'm going to do it. I have the opportunity today. Never has... All the people say that, oh, the bar said so. No one has been able to point to that particular statement. That particular statement was a, a statement which was issued before the resolutions were mm. handed over to the press okay. to set the, 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 the framework. Mm. Now, back to this rate. Mm -hmm. Now, it looks as if that um, because of the timing, mm -hmm. it seems as if we are fighting against Scott and uh, Honorable Scott Praman and... Uh, just as our not just because of the timing, because you use them as a point of reference in the in your yes, in your rate. But you are a lawyer, and I'm happy they brought uh, um, uh, Honorable Fuseni. The point is, what are the reliefs we are seeking? The court, per dam and ado, cannot go outside our reliefs to grant any other relief. So, in so far as we have not asked the court to nullify any um, nomination or uh, swearing in, where does it arise? You have just read no. the reliefs we are seeking. Mm. It may be tangential, but the point is that 
that tangent is irrelevant. The point is, what are we asking the court to do? What we are asking to, the court to do please, is as clear please, as Please like. educate me. Educate me. When in relief four, yes. you say a declaration that an appointment or non-appointment by the President of yes. the Republic of Ghana yes. of a Justice of the Superior Court in a manner out of accord with the advice of the Judicial Council is, one, unconstitutional. Yes. That's the declaration you're yes. seeking. Two, that that appointment or non-appointment is null, it is void, void. and it's of, of no effect. effect. Yes. What, what is this supposed to mean effectively? It is, it is supposed to mean prospectively, not retrospectively. Prospectively. That when the Supreme Court has done with relief one, two, and three, in consequence of these three reliefs, if this roadmap which has been laid down is violated, then any appointment made will be null, void, and of okay. no effect. Uh, let me, I hope I have uh, Mr. <laughs> Abuchi on the line. Do I? Yes, I'm here, sir. Good. A prospective suit. How often do you come across such? Um, well, good morning to my senior colleague, Mr. Tony Fosu, and the other panelists I feel to be earlier. Mm. First of all, I can certainly understand the context in which Mr. Tony Fosu is speaking and the intention to avoid a certain personalization and therefore avoid and therefore us failing to see the bigger picture. The suit that has been brought clearly is intended to address a bigger picture issue. Mm. However, there's a difficulty or there's a conceptual difficulty in that because the Constitution by its nature nullifies whatever has been done in violation of its provision. Therefore, the outcome of constitutional suit in terms of the pronouncement of the court invariably has a retroactive effect. Article 1-2 clearly states that whatever is done in violation of the Constitution is, is void. And therefore, in that respect, the thing would have been deemed never to have happened in the first place. So regardless of the fact that a person may have been stated therein, or a subject may have been mentioned therein, once the pronouncement of the court substantively and effectively affects a particular person or subject, that person or subject, uh, whatever has happened in that respect, would have been deemed not to have happened. So I, I clearly can see that there is no intention to target any particular person. Mm -hmm. But in terms of outcome, the, uh, invariably the Constitution says that the outcome would have been deemed to have been void, and therefore what it means is that the thing would have been deemed never, never to have happened in the first place. Okay. The but, only way but, I can but, the but, only but, point of uh, right. any at all uh -huh. that uh, hello. Yes, go ahead. The only point of escape is any at all that um, one may find in this particular context is if the Supreme Court exercises its inherent jurisdiction to give certain consequential orders. Correct. By making a pronouncement to the effect, for instance, that whatever has <coughs> happened in the past for just and expedient reasons the court would deem that those things should still stand in the interest of equity or justice, among others. But even that, I, it, it's without precedent at this stage, even though I still think the court may have the capacity to do that. Of course, again, the difficulty would be that the court would have to explain and justify how that avoids the nullification clause of the Constitution contained under Article 1-2. Mm. So that's the only difficulty in terms of whether, the, whether we can say that any pronouncement made today can only look forward and cannot affect whatever has happened in violation of the pronouncement of the court. Okay, of the you court. did you did the refer you did refer to the to the fact of the effect of the declaration of such acts as unconstitutional, null and void, and of no effect to have a retrospective effect because that is what it's supposed to do. Really, now if that is what it is, you you do you must contemplate that it would then put all our justices who may have been appointed through a process not in accord with what the GBA is seeking, it would put their status in limbo. Well, that's exactly what I'm saying. Technically, that's the effect. The effect is, you know, the Constitution is very clear in that regard. Even though the Constitution, again, doesn't address the consequences of gaps the consequences of, uh, of, of endangering the entire system mm. in respect of things that might have been done 
and some of them even already consummated and things are completed and all that. Right. The possibility of all these things being deemed unconstitutional and therefore void. But the Constitution is clear. Article 1 3 is just clear mm. that whatever has been done in violation of the Constitution is void. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying that the only escape point may be a case where the Supreme Court may exercise uh, an inherent jurisdiction by way of equity in this regard. That for for purposes of avoiding a certain cataclysm in the entire system, okay. we are going to limit or restrict our pronouncements in respect to their constitutionality for the future. And not make any consequential orders. Whatever has been done, deem mm. that that stands for mm. practical and necessity purposes. Okay. The doctrine of necessity allows in law mm. Mm. That, certain things, uh, that some things be allowed to stand even if they are not properly done, so to speak. Okay. And so maybe that may be the only escape point. But otherwise, mm. the Constitution itself just that whatever has been done in violation of the Constitution, regardless of the fact that the thing is passed, mm. that is affected by the pronouncement of unconstitutionality. And that is why Article 1 2 is followed immediately by Article 2 1, which also gives the Supreme Court the authority to make pronouncements in respect of the void character of things done under Article 1 2. Okay, so thank it's, you. It's an interesting position, mm. and as I said, the only way of avoiding this would be the, for the court to exercise an inherent jurisdiction to give certain consequential orders. Otherwise, okay. we may have a case in which it certainly will affect. Right. The please, please stay on for me. Now, quickly, now, now something yes, before. very no, quickly, no, you, you, okay. you talk about the fact that the court cannot make, uh, cannot grant relief you have not asked for. But he speaks about consequential orders, and quickly, we are all aware, aware of that. Quickly, mm. quickly. Mm. That, pro um, that position he's taking is cured mm. by the 2-1. Because the 2-1 says that a person who alleges that a thing or an act was done uh, in, not in conformity with the Constitution, so a person must bring an action to that effect. It does not o operate automatically. If a person's um, uh, uh, position is affected by the decision of the Supreme Court, somebody will have to bring an action and prove mm. that so, that was so done. So don't you see, uh, uh, Honorable Inus Afseni, don't you see a situation where, and we are assuming that the Supreme Court eventually agrees with the GBA's position, that acting on the advice of the Judicial Council means that advice is binding yeah. and that if the judicial council vets three persons and submits them as those most qualified for the job in the supreme court the president has no discretion but to ensure that these three are presented to parliament and approved for same you 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 don't get the situation where what uh, they are doing someone afterwards if they are victorious will get up and say, okay, then I know of the history of the appointment of, say, uh, Justice Pega. It affects him. I'm going to the court to seek an enforcement against him that he should be deemed as not ever have been appointed to be a Supreme Court judge. Fair enough. Yes. I mean, they have said it in their writ. They said since 1992, mm. since the 1992 constitution came into force, president, president after president have not acted, have not fully have not acted fully on the advice tendered by the Judicial Council in the appointment of spirit uh, court judges. So mm -hmm. they've said it in their writ. So, mm -hmm. so they, they admit to the fact that I mean the what they are doing now has been honoured more in breach than in no. Uh, <coughs> oh no, it's been breached, but not honoured more in breach. Oh yes, because <laughs> everybody I mean we started nineteen ninety two constitution judges just I mean justices of the spirit courts I mean, have been appointed, yes. and you are saying your writ. The presidents have acted in conformity with the Constitution. But none of the presidents who have acted before have, in your view, followed the dictates of the Constitution, as you understand it. So that's what... That's, and then, just oppose that with Article 4 of the Constitution. Mm. I mean, Relief 4 of the Constitution. Mm. Then you come to the unfortunate conclusion that if the Supreme Court so agrees with them, then that will have an effect, that will have an, a retroactive and retrospective effect. effect. But I agree with uh, 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 Mr. Abuchi, because I mean it has happened before under common law. I mean when the there was a usurpation of the British throne by uh, uh, somebody who otherwise was not qualified. You to have be. a lot of British history. Yes, but political this, the, history. But this common law. Okay. <laughs> I mean, right. I mean the, mm. the 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 House of Lords saved the acts of that person uh, because there was going to be a gap. Mm, so. Yes. So that's part of the inherent jurisdiction, and the inherent jurisdiction is always mostly relied on in matters of common law. So that's where it comes, and mm. so so that they can they can remedy whatever gap and defect 
that will arise by reason of that pronouncement. Mm. But it's interesting. I mean, I've always said that, well, we all know, and uh, Justice Reed has said it in some cases, that uh, the law is what the judges say. <laughs> so, so we, I mean, reading on the plain uh, words and actually looking at the convention, what has happened in the past, uh, one is tempted to say, oh, why, but why did this, our, why did our seniors bring this suit? But they want to test the law. I mean, they look, they want to extend the frontier, frontiers of jurisprudence. Why not? And, and, and so, uh, let's support them. Let's support them. Except that it has some uncomfortable feeling that is targeted at what the president did. Okay, let me do this briefly with Abochi again. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Abochi, again, looked at from this perspective, what appears to be what has triggered this suit is this appointment. And in fact, the evidence they adduce is limited to this appointment. So how on earth can the GBA be here to say it has nothing to do with this appointment? Well, um, that's why, again, as I said, the GBA, first of all, we should remember, is the only non-state association which is constitutionally recognized. In the entire constitution, it is the only body which is not a state entity which has been given a constitutional mandate. Mm. The GBA, therefore, going to court to, make them, to secure pronouncements on certain key issues of national importance is a mandate that is conferred on their association, not only as a private association, but also as more or less a quasi-state association okay. with um, legal, you know, uh, being a body of uh, legal persons, so to speak. So the GBA, I think, is totally performing um, a community-oriented interest, uh, a community-oriented mandate, which is imposed on it by the Constitution and by its own internal regulations. Mm. So in that regard, I think um, it's important for us to appreciate that and accept the fact that they are properly in court. Um, having, having said that, that is why I mentioned earlier that I, under, I, I suspect that the GBA is trying to avoid the personalization of this, because this, okay. ma this particular thing has continued since 1992. Mm -hmm. We have had instances where there has been a complete discordance between what the Judicial Council has said and what the President eventually does. Okay. It has been happening almost routinely, mm. and there has been complaints and consistent complaints within the legal fraternity mm. in terms of the expectation of who should be appointed and who eventually gets appointed. So this has been happening for some time now. And therefore, I have a suspicion that the GBA is not necessarily trying, it's always rather trying to avoid the personalization of this, mm. and therefore, as restricting the scope of what they are seeking the court, right. what they are seeking from the court. Right. They, yeah. And, and so I, I think that's what they're trying to do. But the difficulty mm. is, again, in constitutional practice, there's a concept of mootness and rightness. Mm -hmm. And the, one of, the, the, one of the, the principles of these concepts is that you can only come to court when the relief you're seeking has actually been activated by a practical occurrence. Oh, correct. And so if you do not come to court for this, then you may be coming to court to seek an advisory opinion. Mm. Now, the danger for that is that the Constitution, and by our constitutional practice, the Supreme Court doesn't render advisory opinion. Correct. But if you do go to court without a concrete matter, the matter is likely to be thrown out for want of rightness or for it being a, a question of uh, it being uh, dead by way of mootness. Mm -hmm. And so I think the, G, uh, the GBA will be trying to avoid the, the issue of restricting mm. it to this scope and therefore generalizing it so so but don't you don't, don't you feel concept. don't you feel mr bochi that on the authority that you so eloquently espouse on um most recently is it uh Bimpon Buta versus the general legal council or the judicial council ra rather uh we have the the bilson versus uh, the attorney general Mates, mm. all of which the supreme court uh like uh, my learner senior last week said on this platform has no uh speculative jurisdiction don't you feel that from what you have said, the Supreme Court may throw them out of the court, say, well, there's no live controversy? Well, that's exactly what I'm saying, that if we avoid the issue of concretizing it on the recent incident, then the case may be hanging mm. and may have a danger of being thrown out for rightness or movement among others. Okay. Uh, again, if you, if you dwell too much on this, mm. then the danger is that you restrict it to these particular persons and again, the bigger picture gets lost. Okay. But I'm sure that uh, the GBA may not be so concerned even mm. about the issue of people restricting it to these two cases. Okay. So they may actually become the test cases. Mm -hmm. um, virtually all the big cases we've had, mm. which are actually laid down the most fundamental principles, they were because there were specific challenges to particular acts of the executive or a particular agency or state 
Mm. And then the court takes the opportunity to now lay down general principles and bind for the future. All right. So I, I'm sure that it, it will be very difficult for us to avoid this particular recent incident because avoiding them implies that we will be caught by the rightness principle. Okay. Now, now let's 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 hear let's hear from the finest street pocket lawyer you can have. <laughs> um, Kwekutu has been reading this and he's yeah. made his own note. Now, see, some say this this uh, this is couch in the same way as Richie Sky's, you know, uh, rate. Richie Sky is in the court saying that the appointment of the EC, Article 72, says that the president shall appoint the EC boss uh, on the advice of the Council of State. He is making the argument that that advice of the Council of State is binding and the president has no discretion whatsoever in that regard. The GBA is saying the advice of the Judicial Council is binding. You can vary it, you can reject the people they bring be before you. I don't know what your you know, analysis of this is. Well, you know, that is why I am excited about this process. I think it's about time we demystify this whole thing of what advice means within our constitutional context. As uh, opposed to the consultation thing. It's, it's been going on for too long. Mm -hmm. And in recent times, I've come to the fore right. because of the EC thing and this one. Mm -hmm. So to that extent, I'm excited. I'm not sure how it, the journey would go. But my view is that if the Supreme Court at the end of the day is able to demystify it and give us a proper understanding of it, it will guide us into the future. I look at this thing in terms of the future. Because the controversy has been going on for too long and we need to cure that mischief. Mm. But now, how are we going to go about it? In the proceedings at the Supreme Court, I expect that certain facts will be made available. This point about not seeking to personalize, uh, I find it difficult to digest that one. How could we proceed without giving evidence, something of evidential value to show that these are the breaches that past presidents engaged in. And they have made a specific reference to this president yes. and this so, particular so appointment. Even the point of fairness demands mm. that we equalize, that we bring all the evidence available. But let's look at this one in case, uh, as a, an instant one. Mm. The names that were submitted, how were they ranked? And was there a written advice to the effect that you have to consider them in the order of the ranking. Mm -hmm. I know there was those who were labeled highly recommended, mm -hmm. those who were recommended, and then some were not recommended. Now we are dealing with both Supreme Court as well as Court of Appeal. That's right. You see, we can't have such discussions and analysis in a vacuum. Yeah. I find it so difficult. So I'm hoping, since the bar doesn't appear to be ready to put this information in the public domain, I don't see how they cannot put it in the court of law, in, in, in the course of the proceedings, so as to be able to tell us something. Forcing is here, I'm not sure if he's allowed to tell us. Mm. In terms of the highly recommended, was it made manifestly clear that, because you see, they've been dealing with this ceiling of the, in terms of the Supreme Court. That's right. It wished to be 13. Mm -hmm. I think they've moved it up to be 15. Mm. Not really any legislative backing, but it's a convention. Mm -hmm. Now, the names that were submitted and, 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 and ranked, if they were all taken, would it have exceeded the 15? I'm talking of the Supreme no. Court category. No, it would not. It would not? Yes, it would not. It would have rested at 15. Is that so? I actually counted at sure? 14. I, I'm not sure it will, it will get beyond that. Because we have... There are three have, vacancies now. Yeah, there are, oh. three, there are three vacancies mm -hmm. that were prior to... Um, I think last month or so, there's another vacancy that's occurring immediately. I think it's already well, occurred. It, no, did it occur uh -huh. before the list was It sent. could have been anticipated that by the time the process is completed, that vacancy will be there. That is based on failed. his retirement. Yes, retirement. Okay, then that they could anticipate. Right. So, if indeed, and then these are the facts that I said would enable us to make an informed uh, uh, decision on some of these things. In the absence of those facts, it's difficult. But assuming, and this is the first time hearing this, that the list for the Supreme Court, if those 
list of all of them had been appointed mm -hmm. it would not exceed then if i were the president in the shoes of the president i would have allowed all to go in spite of the fact that they categorized some as highly recommended and recommended because both are recommended anyway but the highly is clear okay. but if you did not suggest to the president mm -hmm. that is not suggest advice mm -hmm. That's a more appropriate way right. to do. Uh, that these three the highly recommended language. are the preference of the Judicial Council. Mm -hmm. I have a problem. But what I also find interesting is that the Judicial Council is a defendant in this case. That is so. Fantastic. Because they are saying that they ought to be questioning yes. this, these acts and they are refusing to do so. I love it. Mm -hmm. And that is why in the proceedings, during the proceedings, a lot of the facts could come up okay. and help us to really come to a very informed mm. and fair yes decision. but, but uh, maybe maybe just briefly but, but Tony the, the question also may arise that you are in a privileged position as members of the Judicial Council are you allowed to use this information that comes to you by way of your privileged uh, situation to litigate in a court of law hmm, interesting question interesting and difficult question however the answer is found in the submissions, when uh, uh, Justice Atuguba talks about the expansion of all these uh, um, theories, when it comes to the defense of the public interest, so then you, you avoid all private uh, inclinations, that these are things that affect nation building. Mm. Therefore, the issues of estopel don't arise, mm -hmm. okay. because they go to develop the country, yeah. and it transcends our existence you see so that's where the answer is mm. ha, the, okay. the, very briefly uh Mr. Because Bochy, i was going to and i'll come to you small, and then we'll wrap up i was going to address one to. small problem that yes Kweku, please go ahead Kweku said he mm. had you see the problem that Kweku has i fail to appreciate that you will have to give specifics no the 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 essence of the writ is to ask that when the constitution says something what does it mean and if you look at the jurisdiction of the supreme court it's osarp original supervisory uh, review production of official documents you see unlike the situation in zimbabwe where there's been a clarity in the constitution that in this constitution when they say consultation it means this nobody can go around it in our situation there's a flux as to does it mean that the president is bound or he's not bound mm. the president has executive authority mind you so in the issue that is currently facing us if I were Attorney General and I were to advise the President that look, on the advice means that you can listen to the advice but ignore it. I wouldn't have breached the Constitution because the Supreme Court has not clearly said so. But when the Supreme Court says so, that's why we added the Judicial Council. That when the Supreme Court says so, the Judicial Council henceforth will be bound. Mm. And if it reneges on its duty, the Supreme Court's decision will catch it. Well, why yeah, didn't you, I, why didn't you for example, now. contemplate an impeachment rather? Of, no. of, who? of who? Of the president. No, Why? no, definitely not. <laughs> Why? Definitely Why not. You think about the, get, of the, the drift I'm getting. The president has like not violated any constitutional provision. For now, that's what, what, what actually saying. they are saying. That's that what we are saying. Looking at the uh, uh, the remit of the uh, 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 the Article one four one four four two and the import of Article one four four two, the president ought to be doing more than he did. Thank you. That's what they are saying. So there's no. They have said he has so, breached the constitution. No, no. The president and if the president breached the constitution, he swears to uphold. Yes, that is why the, it is impeachable. No. That's why the writ is interesting. Uh. The writ is very interesting because in certain sections you're looking at breach. In certain sections they say no, it's not a breach. It's non-enforcement of the non-compliance. Non-compliance or, or, or it's a partial compliance. It's in, in fact, <laughs> a partial compliance. And even when you look at the writ. What they are seeking to do now mm. is to combine the effect of Article 3. Let's take a look at Article 3 too. Now, Article 3 says that act or omission. omission. That's what Article 3 says. Right. But their rate is combining both. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's, let me hear Kuku. Uh, let me hear Kuku briefly. Yes. Uh, I'll go to Mr. Abuchi to now, wrap up on this discussion. Now, yes. now the two lawyers are <laughs> seeking to confuse the street <laughs> there. See, why is the Judicial Council the second defendant? If I read their reliefs, the mm. third one mm. and the fourth, mm -hmm. a declaration that accordingly upon a true and proper construction of Article 144, Clause 2 and 3, Clauses 2 and 3 of the Constitution 1992, the Judicial Council of the Republic of Ghana 
has a constitutional obligation to specifically advise the president of the Republic of Ghana as to which specific persons mm -hmm. is, is or are suitable mm -hmm. for the appointment to serve as justices of the Superior Court of the Judicature. In accordance with which advice, the president is mandatorily required to exercise his powers of appointment. Then the four, there, there's a linkage. Yes. A declaration that an appointment or non-appointment by the president of the Republic of a Justice of the Superior Court in a manner out of accord mm -hmm. with the advice of the Judicial Council is unconstitutional, nor void and of no Legal effect. Mm -hmm. Now, what has the uh, Judicial Council done? In this contest, for it to be dragged in as a second defendant. that the advice it has given over the over the years has not been complied with, and yet it's been sitting there quietly, including oh, the no, including this you, one. You, you are, he has given yeah, you further and further particulars of the advice. Mm. In, in fact, he has said that the advice came in categories. That's what he said. Mm. Yes. And in, in, in fact, in the categorization of the advice mm. and the person who I mean uh, subjected to that advice and, and recommendation, some were not recommended. So in that particular case, what does the president do? Interesting. Uh, Mr. Abuchi, okay. Mr. Mr. Abuchi, briefly on this, um, Article, Article uh, 1442 specifically uh, says that the other Supreme Court justices shall be appointed by the president acting on the advice of the Judicial Council in consultation with the Council of State and with the approval of Parliament. Justices of the Court of Appeal, that's three, and of the High Court, and Chairman of Regional Tribunals shall be appointed by the President acting on the advice of the Judicial Council. Specifically in respect of uh, 1442, when the appointment is supposed to be done on the advice, and that doesn't end it, but consultation of the Council of State and then subsequently for parliament to approve. Does that suggest to you that that advice is, is, is exclusive and, and the end of it all? Um, Samson, you are putting me in a difficult position. Particularly where we are told also that the, the re those who were recommended came in categories, highly recommended, recommended, and not recommended. <laughs> well, you are putting me in a very difficult position because... Uh, this is exactly what is before the court. And I think that normally we try to defer. The Supreme Court's pronouncement is what the law is, and all of us can only speculate. Um, I think clearly there's an issue for interpretation. Oh, in court, Ms. Abochi, in court, they are quoting some of us who have written articles about these subjects, about uh, a friend of mine, Justice Sai, who is a lecturer at, uh, at your end, says advice is advice, and it's not binding. Uh, uh, Professor H. Kwesi Prempe and also uh, Kweku, uh, As Stephen Kweku Asari have also written and published about and giving us a history and referred to people like uh, the Law Review Commissioner. Uh, Kweku Bako referred to him last week, for example, who says advice in this respect does not simply mean uh, leave, leave, leave room for discretion. Okay, I understand that Abuji's line but has, let me, has let me, dropped. Let me come in yes. and, and, and explain something. You see, in the, in the 1992 Constitution, executive power and judicial power have some limitations placed on them. Yeah. And the limitations come in three forms. They are, they are substantive limitations. They are procedural limitations. And they are institutional limitations. These are the three limitations. Now, the, what we should be guiding against is okay. raising... Mm. Pro, Procedural limitations into substantive ones. Oh, that's what you see. That's what I see. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bochi, quickly uh, with the question I posed and then we'll move on. No, something clearly, the subject requested of the court there has been an issue of a great deal of contest mm -hmm. among lawyers, among law teachers, etc. Mm -hmm. So clearly, that's what I'm saying that there's a question for the court to answer, in, part, in this particular regard. Mm. It, the, court, the Constitution uses two phraseologies. The first one is you know, in consultation with, mm -hmm. the other one being on the advice of. Right. Generally, it's agreed that in consultation with, it's not binding on the person consulting. Well, so the, the, consult the Indian courts has defined that uh, differently as far as judges, judges are concerned. In consultation with, in the Indian court, it says that that is uh, a perfunctory role that the president has to play. He has no discretion in the matter. That's correct. That's, that's right. And again, I remind that's you that our Supreme Court has been explicit yes. that when it comes to when it comes to pronouncement and interpretation of similar clauses 
or similar provisions from other jurisdictions, the Supreme Court of Ghana, not only is it not bound, but it should be, ca it should be cautious in terms of how you use it in a particular context. So, again, I just want to make the point clear, as we mm -hmm. don't have a lot of time, right. that in consultation with has been generally said not to bind. The one consultant can merely listen and ignore. But then on the advice of, generally among legal scholars, among lawyers, etc., the general impression is that when you use the expression on the advice of, the one being advised is bound to follow the advice. Again, so far the matter has not come before the court. The court now has an opportunity. I think at this stage I have just made clear to you mm -hmm. what generally is agreed on among lawyers and scholars. Mm. I think we will just have to hold on and wait. Uh, okay. We will just have to hold on and wait and hear what the court has to say okay. in respect of what in, the expression in, in that respect, of me. In that respect, may, may Richard Sky's rates, when determined, not render this one otios? I'm sorry? Richard Sky's rates is also to determine the question of advice, which right. is binding. So if that right. is determined, will that not render this particular rate useless? The court has to make a decision as to whether the subject matter sought by the two rates are the same. If the court comes to that conclusion, the court will put them together. Okay. Because the court will not want to make a pronouncement that renders the future one useless. You are looking forward and to so a consolidation of the I'm sure two? The court will make. Okay. If the court comes to that decision, I'm sure they will consolidate the two. Yeah. All right. Sure. All right. Sure. All right. Okay. Which will split. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Right. But this clearly... Thank you very much. But but briefly, what where, what is the judicial council that you refer to? Where, where is it in the in the scheme of things in our constitution? What, what does it do, really? The Judicial Council is supposed to advise the president on who goes onto that bench mm. or all the benches. Beyond that, what does it do? That is this function determined by the Constitution. Is there. Mm -hmm. there. The functions are there. No, I'm asking you for education. I know what they do. Yes. But on this platform, I don't want, presumption, I don't want to presume. My, uh, my listeners need to know. Okay. So what, what, what does it do? Who constitutes the Judicial Council? Um, off the top of my head, I can't tell you, but there are uh, appointments to the Judicial Council made by the President. That's There's true. representation from... One, yeah. five, three. Yeah, the President makes about four of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you see that all shades of opinion go mm -hmm. into the Judicial Council. Right. One, five, three. Mm -hmm. So that the appointment by the Judicial... or the considerations by the Judicial Council mm -hmm. is taken away, although not entirely from uh, executive influence, mm -hmm. because they have uh, representation there. That is so. But this is to strengthen that institution mm. so that it doesn't act. The, the Judicial Council, according to the Constitution, this is the, uh, how it is constituted. Um, the Chief Justice, yes. who shall be the Chairman, the Attorney General, a Justice of the Supreme Court, nominated by the Justices of the Supreme Court, a Justice of the Court of Appeal, nominated by the <coughs> Justices of the Court of Appeal, a Justice of the High Court, nominated by the Justices of the High Court, two representatives of the Ghana Bar Association, one of whom shall be a person of not less than 12 years standing as a lawyer, a representative of the chairman of regional tribunals nominated by the, cha the chairman, a representative of the lower courts or tribunals, the judge advocate general of the Ghana Armed Forces, the head of the legal directorate of the police service, the editor of the Ghana Law Reports, a representative of the Judicial Service Staff Association, nominated by the Association, a chief nominated by the National House of Chiefs, and four other persons who are not lawyers appointed by, by the, the president. president. And they have a wide range of uh, functions to perform, including this particular one that we have been, uh, which is bringing issues. I have some of your messages to read. I'll read them right after this particular break. And when we return from the break, we are moving on to look at the sole commissioner for judgment debts. His report leaked. Is there a mischief in the timing of the leak? I'm just asking questions. The indictment of Betimo de Driso, this will be the fourth time because the Ioko did the indictment. The other courts have also done same and then now we have gone to two times in the supreme court once in the high court and now uh, by the judgment debt commission and also the indictment of nana akofuado in the payment of judgment debts what is all what are the implications of all of these 
We'll be right back to deal with these matters.